Hey, uh, I want, you know, something came up in class today. I was talking uh, at the drop-in class. Some of you guys might have been there. But um, I think it was an important concept of thinking of behaviors not only as that specific behavior, but thinking of behaviors sort of as being uh, classified into a group of behaviors or a class of behaviors or something along those lines. Uh, I probably could find better words for it, but <clears throat> hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Like, so, like, if you think of a dog jumping on you as not only being the unwanted behavior of the dog jumping on you, but classifying that as it's what class of behavior would it fall under? What umbrella would it fall under? We could say it follows, uh, it falls under the attention seeking behavior. So... <clears throat> Right, so the dog's jumping on you and you're trying to stop, you're trying to eliminate the jumping. But what if we think of other places where the dog is also demonstrating attention seeking behavior and getting and getting and being successful at it and getting reinforced for, for that attention seeking behavior, which might just be the dog calmly coming up and putting their head on your lap when you're sitting in your chair and that's so cute and lovey dovey and you pet them for it because it's not. An annoying behavior. It might even be a wanted and enjoyable, a pleasurable behavior for the human. So, but we're, if we're, but people fail to see the connection. How is that connected to the dog jumping on me? But it's the same thing. Or the dog pulling on your, biting on your sleeve, or scratching at you, or barking at you, or doing other behaviors to try and say, hey, pay attention to me. Those are falling under attention-seeking behaviors. And then now let's, so hopefully that makes sense, right? So we're talking about the larger picture of attention-seeking behaviors. And if some of those other attention-seeking behaviors are being rewarded, you're going to struggle more to stop the jumping. You with me so far? Because, okay, because the jumping and the other behaviors are, are connected. Now let's suppose, what else could we call that bubble of behavior? Let's say attention-seeking behavior can become attention-demanding behavior. And that's, but it's still connected. It's still the same thing. So this, the going, oh, aren't I so cute? Pet me is also connected to the, hey, notice me. Stop what you're doing. Don't pay attention to that other dog. Don't pay attention to those people. Stop watching television, whatever, right? So the attention-seeking becomes attention-demanding. And then if you want to really keep stretching that bubble, we could say, well, attention demanding behavior is now becoming pushy behavior, or you could call it controlling behavior. So now the dog is controlling the people or the person. So then you could stretch it a little further and say, well, maybe controlling behavior is also connected to uh, dominance behavior or being dominant, right? So being controlling could be considered a form of dominance. Not necessarily, and we can't ask the dog what they're thinking, but if you can see how these things are connected, and if you are having dominance-related problems, which a lot of people are without realizing it. Um, uh, by the way, dominance doesn't have to be aggressive. Dominance doesn't have to be, you know, brutality and ooh, like, like, uh, you know, The Rock when he was a big time wrestler. You don't have to be like, I am the dominator, right? Dominance can be very subtle. So little things with the dog controlling things or manipulating things could be connected to dominance-based issues as well. But the, the whole thing is looking at not just the particular behaviors, but thinking in terms of grouping those behaviors together or having certain classes of behavior. If you start looking at things that way, you can analyze any behavior problems you might be having with your dog a little bit better. So maybe just wrap your head around that and start looking at some of the problems you're having and thinking about it that way, right? So, and a dog, and think about this also. If the dog is controlling things or manipulating things or right the dog is saying hey pay attention to me hey stop what you're doing this that and the other for a lot of dogs not all not necessarily depends on the dog's personality character temperament so forth but some dogs will start to think well if i can tell you what to do i can also tell you what not to do in other words if the dog can get you to pet them they, they also might be able to tell you off yeah yeah <laughs> screw you 
I don't want you to clip my nails. I don't want you to make me go outside. I don't want you to tell me to get off the couch. Uh, whatever, right? And they can get snotty and sometimes that can just turn into serious problems like real aggression or they might actually start biting. A lot of times it's just snotty behavior. But just think about how all these things are connected. And uh, like, so how, and I have these conversations in my private consultations all the time and it's, sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their head around, well, what is my dog coming up and climbing on my lap and cuddling with me on the couch without being invited, what does that have to do with we're trying to deal with the problem I called you about is because my dog goes ballistic and gets aggressive on the leash when he sees other dogs. Um, with being on the couch with you has nothing to do with other dogs, but what it has to do when we think of the larger grouping if we start climbing the ladder and going, well, maybe that is actually somehow connected to uh, the dog being controlling or the dog leading to the dog being dominant, leading to you not having control over the dog when you're trying to say, don't go ballistic on those other dogs. It's not them being on your lap has anything to do with dogs. It has to do with your relationship. And your relationship has to do with how well you can or cannot control the dog when the dog is in some escalated you know, aggravated, agitated, frustrated, you know, emotional state of some sort. So does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And I'm not just, I think I'm kind of rambling here a little bit. But uh, anyway, it was just something that came up today in class. And I just thought I'd share that with you, you guys on the, the group here since you're interested in dog behavior. So just think about that with some of your things. And if you have any uh, stories you'd like to share or any questions you have, just Put them in the comments and we can chat about it. Okay, have a good one. Later, guys.